And when we were looking for a car for this competition, we thought, what could we try to get? And we discussed this, and I suggested we get, if it's possible, a 911L. Because they're very rare, as you said, they're one year only. They made fewer than 500 of these cars. And no one knows what they are. It's an oddball, and we love oddballs like that. In 1968, there was, uh, there was an issue with smog laws coming into effect in the United States. Porsche could no longer uh, import the 911S into the United States. Only made one year. They approximately made about 1,610 cars, roughly. Um, very special car. Uh, Porsche came up with this L, which was basically the S, uh, with a little bit different engine that had uh, uh, smog equipment on it. Air pump, air injection, uh, you know, throttle positioner, uh, things like that. And, uh, and they, they imported it here as an L. They also had them in, in Europe. Not very many though, but uh, that was where the L came from. It was a one year only. We've been talking about it for three years. We finally get, and we've been talking about it with the service manager, myself, and our lead air cool technician, Bill Manuel. So we've been talking about it, and it was hard to find a car. So we found a car, and it was, we think we got, we were like very fortunate because it kind of fell on our lap as a customer that was coming in for service for a long time now. And he decided to sell his car, and we hinted, you know, geez, we'd like to buy your car. Okay, well, uh, yeah, it's for sale. And so we agreed upon a dollar amount. You know, it came in here. Um, well, he brought the car in here uh, probably uh, almost two years ago. Um, it was very reasonable, he didn't overcharge us, and he was very pleased to sell us the car. He purchased the car uh, from the original owner in 1973. Um, he drove the car, actually raced it a little bit. It was originally sold in New Jersey. Uh, I believe it was New Jersey, uh, somewhere on the East Coast, but, or, or Delaware, somewhere around there. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the original owner uh, sold it to the previous owner. Um, he started doing some work on it, you know, life got in the way, whatever happened, uh, the car ended up sitting for a long time. He brought it to me to get it um, put back together, get it running again. We did, and then he decided to sell it. Um, and he was approached by us to uh, buy it and use it as our uh, restoration project. There was one, there was one little gimme though, the owner wanted us to, he says, I'll sell the car to you as long as you keep it the original color you know, golf blue, and we said we can't do that, we gotta go back to the original Irish green, so he was okay with that at the end. He was really excited for us because he knew the car was a very special car, the challenge, and um, he was excited for us the whole way. In fact, I talked, spoke to him last week, and he was excited, he wanted to know what's the progress, is the car back yet? And I, you know, did tell him, unfortunately, the car won't come back till the end of sometime end of March, early April. So that's how it came about in our hands. It was a, uh, a fortunate turn of events, you know. It's an interesting car because it was Porsche's first step into uh, a car that would be more comfortable. And so L, typically a luxury, uh, kind of followed the Ferrari Lusso, which was their version mm -hmm. of a sports car with a with a more GT flair to it. So the 911L, you could get air conditioning. It had the S gauges, it had plaid interior, it had the Fuchs wheels, it had all of those things, but it did not have the ultra high performance engine. It was a far more streetable engine and much easier to drive. So this was a, and you could also get an automatic, the Sportomatic as they called it, Ultimately, uh, it, it, it didn't work out like they wanted it to, but it was certainly their first step to make a 911 very civilized so people could use them in comfort. And so when they found a 911L, I went, there it is. No one else will have a 911L. Ls are very rare. Coming soon, episode three, April Fooled. April 1st is 
the day they told us we could have it back, but okay. they've already gone. April, for the April 1st, a April Fool's back. Day. April Fool's yeah. Day, yeah. So they told you April 1st and you believe that <laughs> statement. I believed them. A missing fuel cap door and a small hole and lot damage delays work and further tightens a tight schedule. I leave it just like this. I wouldn't put anything there. Well, <laughs> let's not we've put gotta any start. We've got to start with the wiring and then. Follow us at the Porsche Pasadena YouTube channel for regular updates on our Porsche Restoration Challenge 23.